Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a realistic sand material in Blender using the new Gabor Texture node. First, add an object that you want to apply your sand material to. I'm just going to use a basic plane. Then, add a new material. Our mesh needs to have geometry to displace, so we're going to add a subdivision modifier, set it to simple, and increase the levels to 3 or 4, depending on the strength of your computer. Then, make sure that Feature Set in the Render Properties tab is set to Experimental. Make sure that the Adaptive Subdivision setting is now visible and enabled on the Subdivision Modifier, which will increase the detail of the mesh closer to the camera, allowing us to see all those lovely grains of sand. Also make sure that the Viewport Dicing Rate under Subdivision in Render Properties is set to 1. First, add a Gabor Texture, change the scale to your liking, and then connect the value output to the height input of a displacement node, which will be connected to the displacement input of the material output node. Then, under Settings in the Material Properties tab, make sure that Displacement is set to Displacement only. Go to Rendered View and adjust the scale on the displacement node until the ripples of sand are at a realistic height. We also want to replicate the individual grains of sand, so let's first add a Voronoi texture and set the scale to 10,000. If you look at a close-up of sand, you'll see that there's quite a lot of variation in the color of the grains, from white to black to orange to yellow. So to replicate this, we'll connect a color ramp node after our Voronoi texture and add some different tones to create variation in our sand. Then, connect the output to the base color input of our principal BSDF. Now we've got the color of our grains down, let's add the geometry. Add a Mix Color node before your Displacement node, ensuring the Gabor texture is connected to input A. Then add the output of the Voronoi texture to input B, and set the Blending mode to Overlay. Set the Factor to 0.01. With this, we're essentially combining the macro displacement of the ripples of sand with the micro displacement of the individual grains. Now, when you go to render your material, you can see the individual grains of sand. To add one more final layer of realism, we're going to replicate the way sand sparkles as sunlight hits it. Add another Voronoi texture and set it to 10,000 as before. Select it and press Ctrl T making sure that the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled to add texture coordinates and mapping nodes. Make sure you're using object rather than generated texture coordinates. One of the key features of sand is that it appears to twinkle in the sunlight as the observer views it from different angles, and to replicate this we're going to be mixing the texture coordinates of our Voronoi texture with the incoming output of the Geometry node, which specifies the vector between each point on the mesh and the observer. Take the incoming output and add a separate XYZ and combine XYZ node, as we're only going to be using the Z component of the vector. Then, add a mix color node between the texture coordinate and mapping nodes, and connect the outputs of the object and combine XYZ nodes to inputs A and B respectively. Now, increase the factor until the Voronoi texture twinkles as you move around the object, but doesn't distort. Let's go with 0.05. Then, connect the output of your Voronoi texture to a color ramp node and pull up the black slider until you have just a few isolated white sparkles. Then, add an invert color node and connect the output to the roughness input of the principal BSDF. The reason for inverting the color is that dark areas will have a lower roughness and will therefore be shinier and produce sparkles, whilst lighter areas with a higher roughness will not. Now, as we move around the object, we can see that the sand glitters and sparkles where the sunlight hits it. Thanks for watching, and happy rendering.